Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for as your word comes forth, use this frail leaves of clay to communicate, to bring forth life, O oh God. Your word will not go back to you void. It will accomplish in every life what you have proposed. Thank you, Lord, for doing more than even what we expect in Jesus' name. Friends, let's turn quickly um, in our Bibles to Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 is the main, the main, but I'm going to add verse 13. The theme of this conference or the topic um, is attain. And I'm also saying as we, um, as I share, um, I'll call it, you know, press on. Press on, not looking back. So he says, not that I have already attained or am I already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of me. Verse 13, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, for God, forgetting those things which are behind, I'm reaching forward to those things that are ahead. Permit me to quickly read the Passion Translation, which is my favorite in recent times. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 um, to 13. Or maybe 14 as well. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Passion Translation. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I am pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and whatever he wants me to discover. Hallelujah. And verse 13 says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future Instead, I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Christ. The word that keeps coming up here is run. And in the previous translation, pressing, pressing to attain, running to attain. When we talk about attaining, it talks about trying to um, win something to get the prize, to reach a goal. We cannot live goalless lives. We cannot live lives um, where we are thinking, you know, whatever will be, will be. There's no, um, when you watch people play soccer, um, there, there are goalposts on each side. So each side is aiming for that goal. They are aiming to attain, um, or to score some goals. What are you aiming for? What are you attaining for? We are attaining for the prize, the heavenly prize where Jesus will say, well done. What are your goals? What are you striving for? Okay, striving to fulfill purpose. We are not living aimless lives, right? But I remember when I was I'm back in high school, I used to run. I was into athletics and I used to run. I used to run long distance. And I realized, and I, you know, would think that um, in those days, I want to get the gold. I want to get the first prize. I want to come, you know, first, okay, second or third, you know, because those are the top prizes, the gold, the silver, and the bronze. I don't say, oh, well, if I, if I win, if I, if I don't win, it doesn't matter. I set my gaze, first of all, to finish and then to win, okay? Because sometimes you find people who drop um, along the wayside. Either they get injured or they get tired, but that will not be your case in Jesus' name. The word run comes to mind because in this, um, in the Passion translation, it says, I admit I have yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion 
into his abundance, that I may reach the purpose that Christ has already called me to fulfill. So you see, he has called us to fulfill something. He has set a goalpost before us. <laughs> he has given us a goal. He has given us a target. We are not running aimlessly, okay? And that is what we are uh, to set our minds on. There is a finish line. And so whatever you're going through today, if you have not gotten to the finish line, then it's not over for you. If you have not breasted that tape, then it, you have not come to the end. You may be down and out. You may, it may seem like you've fallen by the wayside. Get up and keep running. Because until you get to the end, it's not over. Man cannot tell you that it's over. Man can't tell you this is the end. Man can't tell you this is the goalpost. No, it's the goal that God has set for you. And so keep running. If you fall, get up and keep running. Hallelujah. So that is the joy of running because there is an end. There is an end. And the Bible tells me that the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. So keep running. Your path is shining bright. Your path is shining brighter. It's not shining darker and darker. Run your own path. Stay in your own lane. Don't look at another person's lane. I remember in those days while running, um, your one is tempted to, to, you know, to, to look back to look back, to, to, to say, hey, how am I doing? <laughs> you know, to, to see, is there anyone coming close? How am I looking? But I realized then in those days, even now, runners will tell you, for that split second that you look back, it slows you down. For that moment that you look back, you've lost some ground. So be focused. Be focused. Keep your gaze. Don't look at what another person is doing. Don't look at their own lane. Don't look, don't compare yourself. Don't be afraid that they are coming close or they are overtaking you. You have a race to run. And until you get to the end, you, you can't be declared um, a winner. You can't be declared um, a, a success or a failure. You are not a failure. Failure is not you. Okay, failure is an event. It is not you. So keep going, keep going, keep running, keep pressing and do not look back. Keep pressing and do not look back. There will be temptation to look back. Lot's wife looked back. They were meant to escape. They were meant to you know, just keep going. She looked back. She became a pillar of salt. That will not be your portion. You will not be extinguished. You will not become irrelevant. You will not fizzle out. Okay? You will not die before your time. Your vision will not die. Okay? So pick it up and keep running. And um, for, some run short distance. Some run mar marathons. I run more of the long distance. So the long distance allows you to pace yourself. Okay? It doesn't really give room for laziness or, or the sort, but it, in your mind it tells you that it's a long, it's, it's for the long haul. You are in this for the long haul, not just, just for a microwave spread. You are in it for the long haul. So how do we, um, how do we, there are other scriptures that come to mind when we um, talk about running or pressing in to Pain. Um, because life is compared to so many things in the, in the scriptures and one of them is a race a race um, let me look at let's look at 1st Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 in the New Living Translation 1st Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 and it says don't you realize that in a race everyone runs but only one person gets the prize so run to win. Press in to win. Press in to win. Run to win. You're not running to lose. <laughs> it may look like you're losing ground right now. It may look like every other person is going, is winning. But because, again, you are a born winner. So win in reality. Win in manifestation. Another scripture that talks about running or pressing in is Hebrews 12, 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 in the New Living Translation. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, 
let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Uh, every weight that slows us down. So one of the things that will slow us down is not just looking back. It's not just comparing to what your neighbor is doing or how your neighbor is running and looking back. But one of the things is even the weight that we ourselves have put on us. When I used to run, I realized that we had to wear really tight-fitted, you know, shorts, you know, running shoes. Sometimes we ran barefoot, you know, barefooted, yeah? Because barefooted mm, is the best. <laughs> your feet are, there's no weight on your feet, okay? I don't know if today um, they allow um, um, people to run, at least to run barefooted. You have to have your entire gear on. But we ran barefooted in those days. And um, if you also wanted to run with your sneakers, your tennis, and you know, you're running um, shoes, that was okay. But I love the barefooted because you're lighter. You're just going and you're just going. But again, you're not allowed to carry your backpack, your school bag with all your books. There's nothing. You're not allowed to. You wouldn't even want to carry it. Why would you want to carry that weight? Okay? When you're going for your classes and your lectures, you can carry your books. You can carry everything, you know. Um, everything you want to carry. Your pencils, your, you know, your stationery. But in running, you do not carry nothing. Zero. Zilch. Nothing. Okay, you do not put on heavy um, clothing. Your clothing must be so um, light and kind of even tight-fitted so that there is no resistance to the wind. You strip off every weight that is on you. So it says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that easily trips us up. Mm. Comparing... Um, um, weight to sin, sin to weight. Um, sins are weight. They slow us down. They're like the virus that will jam our system. And it says, let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Let us run with endurance. Let us press in without giving up the race that is set before us. Let us run with endurance to attain. So I'd like to mention a few tips, a few uh, things. How can we press in without looking back? How can we press in to attain? How can we press in to win um, the prize that is set before us? How can we? First of all, I'd like you to know you have a destiny. You have a purpose to fulfill in Christ. Discover it. Discover it. Your purpose is not mine. Mine is not yours. Of course, in the overall purpose of the scheme of things as a child of God, it's your purpose to um, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your mind. It's our purpose to win souls. It's our purpose to, to uh, make him known. Um, it's our purpose to show forth his praises. We're a royal priesthood. We're chosen people. And we are called to be light, to shine bright. We are called to um, show forth his praises, to manifest his glory. That is the overall purpose. But within that purpose um, of, um, of every believer in Christ Jesus, we have individual purposes. We have individual callings and destinies. Okay, We have um, ways. Um, in which we are to express the overall, you know, um, expansion of his kingdom. We have ways in which we are to shine as light, okay? And one of it is preaching. It's my purpose, one of my uh, purposes um, and callings from God to preach the gospel, to share and to teach, to bring healing. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison doors to them that are bound, to give them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Therefore, I will not be surprised 
that as I am teaching, the Bible says, as Jesus began to preach and to teach, the power of God was present to him. Therefore, I will not be surprised during and after this meeting if there are amazing testimonies from anyone out there listening. I would not be surprised if someone is healed even as I speak. I would not be surprised if someone is delivered from emotional baggage without me laying hands or anything because this is the calling on my life. Someone else may be called into business. Someone else may be called to give clarity to entrepreneurs to, to show them the way in which they are to um, go about selling their goods so that they can be anti-financiers of the kingdom so that they can make money and make you know financial profit for the gospel and you know um, for other um, good works again. I know I am called to, you know, um, bring succor to, to widows, to girls on the streets, to those who have been abused and oppressed, to children that have, have been abandoned. And of course, I have sought and pressed in to set up a structure, to set up a place of healing, to, 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 you know, to set up a system whereby people like that are um, transformed, are reformed, are loved on and sent back into the society to really be um, a blessing, to be planted, to be trees indeed of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. What is your own calling? What is your own purpose? What are you pressing in to feel, fulfill? So that at the end of the day, when you stand before the master, when you have breasted the tape in heaven, he will be able to say, well done, good and faithful servant. He will be able to say, well done to you. He will be able to say, well done to me. He will say, well done to you because he will say, you kept on track. You stayed on your lane. You ran your race. Again, he will say to another person, well done. He would not use my job description to judge you. Again, so I read part of my job description, which is from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 3. What is your own marching orders? What is your job description? Again, we do not run, start running at the same time. I know in a regular race, there are about five people on a row and it says, on your mark, set, go, boom. But the thing is that you go when you hear the sound. When you hear the sound, that is when your own go begins. That is when your own race begins. So again, it might look like race we're running together but really it is an individual race so you have a destiny and a purpose to fulfill in christ discover it and run with it two satan wants you to quit midway mm. he wants you to quit midway so he throws a lot of distractions and challenges at you expect them yeah someone saying nikki how can you say expect them expect challenges yes expect them i'm going to tell you the truth because we might have said oh no challenges are not for christians they are not you know once you give your life to christ everything's going to be so smooth no, that is a lie because jesus never said that he said in this world you will have tribulation you will have persecution even for my name's sake but be of good cheer be excited be joyful because i have overcome the world i am with you in it when you pass through the waters you will not drown when you pass through the fires it will not kindle upon you. No wonder many of us have been through hell and high water. We have been through all kinds, but we do not look like what we've been through. Mm. We, we do not look, my life is an example. I do not look like what I have been through or what I might be going through right now because I know who is with me in the journey. I know who is with me. And that is the, the difference between knowing him, having a relationship with him because we we all suffer. I mean, the enemy throws things in our path. Whether you're a believer, whether you have a relationship with God or not, as long as we're in this world, there will be suffering and there will be tribulation. But the difference with you, between you uh, who has a relationship with God and the one that does not is that because of that relationship, you can count it all joy. James chapter 1 verse 2, you can count it all joy when you fall into trials and tribulation because you know it's working in you patience. And then you know, you know that it's part of the race. And you see, when we come to the point where we see the pattern, okay, early on many years ago and, you know, as a younger Christian, and even after being, a, a, you know, a Christian that's been a bit, you know, also advanced in years, sometimes I will trip up because the enemy comes from an angle I'm not expecting or I, I didn't see and it could throw me off guard. 
and I could, you know, be emotional about it, cry, and then get myself together again. Okay, what does the word of God say? But now, I'm not saying that I'm perfect or anything, but when you expect, I'm not saying waiting, sitting down, saying say that I'm waiting for you today. No, it's just that knowing that even when things are going smoothly, <laughs> you're conscious that. You could come from another angle. That's why when you wake up, you pray, and then you declare God's word over you. You say, I'm, I'm walking in, in the fullness of God's grace today. I'm walking in favor. I overcome every challenge that comes my way. Yes, you say that because you know challenges will be on the way, but you're declaring that you will overcome it. So that is why what I'm saying to expect um, those challenges. So it's part of your confession that when, because it says when the enemy comes like a, a, a flood, the, the, the Lord will lift up the standard. He didn't say maybe, he says when he comes. <laughs> so again, we are more than able to overcome because Jesus even has already paid the price. He's overcome already on our behalf and we need to tap into that. So don't quit midway. Satan wants you to quit. As you're wrong, he wants you to say, look, just give up. You can't stop to rest, but don't give up. Amen. If I rest, go along the way. Joyce Meyer um, says this popularly and I adopted that for so long. Enjoy your life on the way to where you're going. Enjoy the journey. And just know that it's a marathon and you're in it for the long haul. So don't let him distract you. I mean, you could, things as little as, okay, you wake up and you say, okay, today I have this project this, and this is what I want to do. You put down your list and you say, so help me God, right? So you have three things. You can say, I want to write that, um, the first chapter of my book, or I want to be able to write, you know, two chapters in the next two days. And then you begin to see all kinds of things not allowing you, okay? Your laptop, your device begins to act up and all of that. You know, you don't throw your hands up in the air. You know, you know that, okay, because you have set this goal, why is it today that your device is acting up? Because you set a goal, it was put down. You know, the goal, the angels saw the goal. The, the angels, um, they, they saw your goal. The enemy also sees your goal and says, going to distract her today. So don't cry, don't throw your hand. Breathe. Declare, confess the word. Don't panic. Try to fix it. You know, just stay on course. Stay on course. Okay, the device is not working. While it's not working, I'm going to use my phone. I'm going to use my pen and I'm going to still write. I'm still going to jot down everything. You know, so we will always find a way around it if we are open to the Holy Spirit, we are open to creativity. Number three, keep your eyes on the finish line. Focus on the prize of your coin. Keep your eyes. Keep your eyes on the finish line. Keep your eyes on the finish line. You will finish strong in Jesus' name. You will finish strong because it's not how well we start out, but it's how well we finish. It's not how well we start out, it's how well we finish. So we can start out weak, but finish strong. Because along the way, along the journey, we learn, we grow, um, we learn from our mistakes. So um, we are expected, I expected to do better this year than I did last year. I expect myself to do better this year than I did last year in terms of my goals, in terms of habits. Goals in, could include breaking certain habits. Goals could include Okay, not just, oh, I want to earn this amount this year, this six figure or whatever. Goals could also mean breaking certain habits that will delay us or deter us or um, cause us not to walk in integrity. So those are the things that should make it into our goal list. And uh, at the end of the day, celebrate and say, hey, I don't get as angry <laughs> as I used to before. Such goals are worthy of celebration when you see that someone you know before someone would say a bad word and before you know it you are also replying with all kinds of unthinkable things but now you keep your calm you should look back and say hey I've changed this is a new me and that is worthy of celebrating yep just like you just won a jackpot because it was your goal to get over anger and you find out that You've done it. The Lord has helped you. So, point four, forget the negative past. 
forget the negative past. The enemy tries to bring to our consciousness um, memories of the past. Memories of the past can sometimes um, keep us numb. Ugly memories, ugly past experiences sometimes can cause um, emotional trauma all over again by dwelling, by thinking so much, by worrying. When the thought of your negative past shows up, as quickly as it shows up, kick it out. Tell yourself, I'm the righteousness of God. Tell, tell yourself, that's my past. I'm not dwelling on that. Because it will come. There might be triggers. There will be things that will remind you. And that's not a sin. That's a temptation. But quickly, counter it with another thought. Counter it with a positive thought. Counter it with what God's word says about you. There's therefore no condemnation to the who, those who are in Christ Jesus. They counter it with a thought that says you are a new creature, all things have passed away. Counter it with a thought of the goal that you are even trying to achieve, okay? Don't dwell on it because when you dwell on it, what happens is that the whole emotion about that negative past could come full skill into your mind and you find yourself being taken back to when you were eight years old. Right now, you might be like 25, you may be 30, you may be 16, or you may be 64 or 50 something like me. But something might have happened when you were five years old or eight years old, and the thought just comes. And the more you dwell on it, you just find out that you are just back. You replay, reenacting the whole thing. Your body begins to react to it. You begin to behave like you are really living it. That's because you've given um, attention full scale to that experience. So don't be surprised when thoughts of your negative past just pop up here and there and show up. You know, just like when you're on your screen, you're on your device, on your phone, on your laptop, whatever it is you're using to work, to type your book, to balance the account, to do your taxes, to um, do your work or your schoolwork. If you're a student, you know, many times we have our devices in front of us, right? to work, especially even right now in these times we're in during this, you know, ugly pandemic. Um, we're all mostly working from home, using our devices and all of that. So you're there typing away. You're there reading a book or doing your work. And then, or reading an article and suddenly something pops up that you didn't expect. You didn't log on to that website. You did something ugly pops up, you know. And um, what do you do? You, 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 I didn't sign up for you. You know, it just pops up because you're on the internet. We're on the World Wide Web. Because you don't want a distraction, what do you do? Close it. Because there's usually that X, usually that close. Okay, they are offering you something. It could be an advert, it could be whatever. Because you don't want to be distracted, you quickly close it. But if you want to be distracted, or if you fall for the temptation, you're going to say, hmm, I'm going to explore, let me explore this thing. I'm going to see them words. And then you explore it. You click on it. Click bait. You read it. You read it. And then you find it's something ugly that won't even help you. Sometimes it's something positive that is a blessing. Like, oh, wow. Wow, I've been thinking of finding a coach. I've been thinking. And then this just pops up. You know, sometimes it's something pleasant which you could just read a little bit and say, okay, I'll save that for later and I'll come to it, right? And then you continue work. But sometimes it's just something ugly. Something could be pornography. Something could just be something new, but just something you're not even interested in at all. At the moment you, you, you see it, you don't want to be distracted, so close it. But what do we do sometimes? We're like, hmm. You begin to look at it, it begins to feed your flesh, it begins to look pleasurable, and then you go on and on, and before you know it, you've done nothing. You've gone down another road that you did not want to. Okay? So yes, been there, done that, but these are tips to help us to um, overcome these um, distractions. So forget a negative past. I gave that example just to say that is the way a negative past pops up into our minds, just like when you're on a device and things pop up that you did not plan for it to pop up, right? So don't think that you're sinning, just don't think like, oh, why is this popping up from my past? You know, sometimes it's just a flash or a vision of something you've done before, something really ugly. Don't feel condemned. Just get it out and move on. 
I'm, I like to read the scripture in, to buttress that. Um, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 in the TPT, <laughs> the, living, the, the Passion Translation, Hebrews 4 15, it says, If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. If they had been thinking, if they had been thinking, of the country they had left. They would have had the opportunity to return. You know, Lot's wife was thinking. They were escaping from Sodom and Gomorrah. They were, um, God was just saving them and saying, look, just run, just leave, just keep going, don't look back. She looked back because she was thinking about what she was leaving behind. She was thinking about who oh, all the pleasures of this. The place was on fire. The place was no longer good for them to live. It was no longer their dwelling place. They were being led by God to somewhere else where they were going to start a new life. But she was finding it difficult to move on. She was thinking and looking back, represented, oh, I miss, oh, I wish I could go back. I wish, no, don't wish anything. Embrace the new that God has for you. Okay? And so he said, if they had been thinking about the country they had left, if they had been thinking about where they had left, it may not be a country. I don't know what you have come out of. Don't think about it anymore. It, because if you keep thinking, then you're going to keep thinking there's an opportunity to return. You won't return to your vomit. You won't return to what does you no good. Don't return to relationships that you've exited from because the Lord led you to exit from them. Do not be tempted to go back into this relationship. No matter how um, beautiful it looks right now, no matter how pleasant, or pray about it. If the Lord says, do not return, do not return. Just keep going, just keep going. Um, and that's it. Without any hard feelings, without any offense about the place or about the people, God says, move on, move on. Forgive, forgive. Forgive doesn't mean that you're forgiving. It doesn't Forgiving someone or forgiving a relationship doesn't mean you have to go back to it. Okay, it's not working for you. Forgive and move on. Forgiving doesn't mean that you go back and embrace them and dwell there. Okay, so um, that's it about forgetting the negative past. Number five, remember those that have gone ahead of you, including Christ and the great cloud of witnesses. Some endure, endured worse situations than we did. So remember those who have gone ahead. You know, when I read the scripture earlier on and I said, they are looking from um, Hebrews 12, 1, um, when it says, we are surrounded, since we're surrounded by a great and a huge crowd of witnesses, a huge crowd of witnesses, you know, it's, it's an encouragement that we are being watched. So what he says, you can um, um, remember those who have gone ahead of us, okay? Those who have gone to glory. Christ is watching over us. They are watching. They are the great cloud of witnesses. They are the great cloud of witnesses. And I'm going to read the Hebrews 12, 2 to 3, because we had read Hebrews 12, 1. I said, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, and we can read verses 2 and 3, Hebrews 12, 2 and 3. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Keeping our eyes on Jesus as we run, as we run in the midst of um, a great crowd of witnesses. Hmm. We're stripping off every weight that slows us down, right? We dealt with that. The sin that trips us up. We are pressing in with endurance. The race before us. We are pressing in. We are letting go of the past. We are letting go of every weight. We are running free. We are running light. We are traveling light. That's it. Travel light. Don't travel with baggage that you do not need. Okay, don't go with excess baggage. Notice that whenever we're flying, whenever you're traveling, you're allowed a certain weight, a certain amount of um, 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 luggage. When it exceeds that, you pay for it. So if you carry excess luggage, you go pay for it. May you not pay for it with your life. May we not pay, may we not pay for it with our lives. You pay for excess luggage. So don't carry excess luggage. Travel light. 
at every opportunity in your journey in life. So verse 2 says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. So we press in, we travel light, we lay aside every week. By what? Keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy that was waiting for him, he did what? Endured the cross and disregarded its shame. Mm. So we can borrow his example. We can look at how he did it. He, he disregarded the shame. So in our journey, sometimes there are shameful situations. Sometimes there are things that look like, oh my God, this is not adding up. But like I said in the beginning, it's not the end until you win. It's not the end until you breast that tape. Let no one tell you it is the end of you because it is not. And because it is not the end, no one is permitted to judge. Even God is not, he's not judging you. You're not being judged till you get to the end. So he says, because of the joy, Jesus' joy waiting for him was the souls. It was the souls on the other side of the cross. The cross was the shame, the beating, the, the, the momentary even separation from God that he knew while he would on, on the cross, the betrayal of Judas, who was one of his disciples, all of that was the shame. And he knew that he would pass through that. What helped him to endure it? The joy set before him. What is your joy? The fulfillment of the purpose. What is your joy? Living to hear him say, well done. Many times our children live to hear us say, well done, we did well. You know, even when they, they get grades less than what they wanted or more than less than what we expected, even though they didn't get the A star or the A plus, they got the B, sometimes even the C or the D, but they want to still hear, you know, that well done. Okay, and my philosophy or my um, um, idea is always this. Did you do your best? You know, did you try to improve over your past grade? So it's not about the A's. Did you go from a D to a C? Well done, because you put in effort. And again, it's still not the end. It's still not the end. It's not the end for a first grader. There's second grade, there's third grade, there's fourth grade. It's still not the end for um, someone who's a senior in college, going into the big wide world, not having a very good GPA. It's not the end. In fact, it's just the beginning. So you say, well done, at least you, 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 you went through college, you know, so it's always about perspective. And this is how God looks at us. Christ is cheering us on. The great cloud of witnesses, they are cheering us on. They are not beating us down. They're not holding an ax over your head, waiting for us to, to trip up, waiting for us to make a mistake and say, see you fail, see you fail. You tripped up there like, no, get up. Get up and keep running. You can do better tomorrow. You can do better tomorrow. Can you hear them cheering you on? If you stay still, he says, be still and know that I am God. If you stay still, you will hear the voice of God. They, they, you, you've heard too much the voice of the enemy. You've heard too much the voice of accusers in your head. You've heard too much the voice of maybe your parents growing up or your mom or your dad. You've heard too much the voice of your mom when she used to shout, shout, shout. Hey, calm down. And you'll hear the voice of God saying, son, I don't condemn you. Daughter, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Again, the accusers came wanting to stone this woman because she was caught in adultery. She ran to Jesus. Jesus kept quiet for a moment because he was thinking, how am I going to catch these guys? And then he lifted up his head and said, who among you has not sinned before through the next stone? They were like, oh gosh, why did he bring that up? Why did he bring that up? And they left one by one. And when Jesus was left with her, when you are left alone with God, you will hear love. You will feel love in the midst of your mistakes. Why? Because he's always eager for us to like, okay, you know what? Don't do a pity party. It's okay. You failed. You missed it. I forgive you. Move on and run. That's what he said to her. In John chapter 8, from verse 1, he said, Woman, I do not condemn you, but go and sin no more. He corrected her in love. He told her that she could do better, but he said, you know what? Keep running. They wanted you to be stuck here. They wanted this to be the end of you. That is why they wanted to stone you to death, as the law says. But I have brought the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which supersedes the law of the sin and death, which supersedes legalism. 
Mm. We to persist accusations. We can never attain to the laws of the Old Testament, to, to what the Pharisees are expecting. But Jesus said, you know what? Keep running. This is not the end of you. In fact, from today, your race is beginning. Mm. Go. And so he set her free and he says, Pow! your race begins now. Can someone hear God saying, your race begins now. Forget the former things. Run. Press in. Don't look back. Attain to the prize and to the goal that is set before you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. I know this is blessing someone. I know this is for someone out there. I feel that deliverance coming to you already. Mm, thank you, Lord Jesus. I see that emotional baggage living, living you already. I see a lightness in your heart already. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I see you receiving grace to forgive, even though they didn't apologize. Mm. You know, it's easier when they apologize. Joseph kept running. His brothers had left him. They had sold him. They had, you know, he didn't think he would ever see them. Did he wait to see them before forgiving them? He forgave them somewhere in the journey. I don't know, somewhere between maybe Potiphar's house and prison or wherever. He had processed it and received grace to forgive them. It wasn't when he saw them. For if he had not forgiven them when he saw them, he would have first declared their next, just, you know. But the moment they saw him, they didn't recognize him. Yes, but he recognized them. And he said, I am Joseph. They froze. They froze. But before they could say we are dead men, he said, don't worry. He meant it for evil. But God turned it around for him. He didn't even wait for them to stew in the pain of what they had done. And what being confronted with the Joseph report was dead. He didn't wait for them to stew in that guilt and that, oh my God, we are dead. You know, we have let them to steal. Some of us, what we do, we, we let them steal a bit. Uh, we know we forgive him. We know we let them go. We're like, let them feel the, the agony that they will be thrown in. Let them, but he did it. The moment they put, he said, don't worry. I know you feel bad, but it's okay. It's all good. You meant it for you. Well, I've forgiven you. Go bring my father. Oh my God. Can we get to that point when you are faced with that person that hurt you so deeply? Or when you are in a position where you can revenge. When you are in a position where that person that refused, that uncle, your, maybe your orphan, and that uncle that refused to pay your school fees, that refused to take you up and support you, and you struggled so much, but now you're wealthy. Now you're in a position of power and they need your help. Mm. Can you be free enough to say, don't worry? God help me and I forgive you. Can you? Or will the, you know that urge to revenge rise up in you? No. We receive grace in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. So we're rounding off. Let me just run quickly through the um, two points left because that was point five. And um, Jesus is seated in the place of honor in God's throne where he left and came down from all of that glory and his back and um, interceding for us, cheering us on, feeling our pain because he walked on the earth, he was human and he was, so he, he knows and he's interceding for us and um, he endured all the hostility but he didn't give up. So don't give up. Don't be weary in well-doing. And the number six point is depend absolutely on God's grace. We need to depend on his grace absolutely to overcome every weakness and temptation. Depend on his grace. What is the stock market saying? What is your business looking like that you invested so much? Depend on his grace to give you creativity. Depend on his grace to open another door of opportunity for you even in these stressful times we're in it's not the end of you don't think all your investments have come to waste say lord give me creativity if it's a new business you need to pander to pivot to or if it's the old one that needs to be revived 
the, the, the gurus of business, the gurus, the experts in, in, in various fields, even in the season we are in now, some are at a loss of words, things, loss of what to do. Things are not adding up like they should um, anymore. And some can't even admit that, you know what, mm, the permutations and the calculations are not adding up. This is a very strange year. But there's someone who um, is not overcome by that strangeness. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the one who created everything. The one who knew this season before we came into it. He, the one who has the last card. The one who sits in the heavens. The one who says, he shall relax. Ah, so we go to him to receive grace and say, Lord, you know what is going on. And you know the way of escape and you know the way out. Thank you, Lord. So we depend absolutely on his grace to overcome every weakness, every temptation, the prayer and the word of God will give us access to this grace because the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God's word. Hallelujah. We have his grace already, but as we soak ourselves in the word of God, um, understanding comes. His voice comes. Clarity comes to us. Prayer is not just talking to God. I want, I want, I want. Lord, help me, help, help me, help me. Show me the way. It's also listening because he wants to speak. And you will hear him expressly in Jesus' name. So lastly, I'll say this again of the sermon. Never give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep going. Like I said, stop to rest. It's okay. But don't give up because it is not over. Don't give in. Don't give up. Friends, it may look like we're living in the worst of times. But from heaven's view, from the spiritual perspective, it's the best of times because um, it's not a time to die, but it's a time to birth, to birth new things. And I know it's so sad, so many lives have been lost. Um, you might, the average person knows someone who knows someone, even if you didn't lose a close relative or friend. I pray that's not your portion. And if you have, you know, with the, with the Lord's um, presence and peace comfort you. But the average person uh, really knows someone who knows someone. So maybe two or three people away, um, someone's friend's dad or someone's friend's friends, you know, who has passed on in times like this. But I'd like us to also um, focus, even as God brings comfort to such people and such families, and you might be listening right now, you probably just loved a loved one, maybe even just this week, um, the Lord strengthened you. And cause you not to be stuck in that place forever, but to keep going because he's got you. Um, it's a time to focus on life because in the midst of all this, lives are being born, children are being birthed, children are being born every day. We're not even celebrating that enough because, again, um, that is such a very, you know, huge thing that we're like, oh, this person died again. Um, so um, someone else has died again, but you know, lives are being born, children are being born, visions are being born, new dreams, dreams are waking, oh, voices we never heard before are coming into the scenes, young people are finding their voices, whereas it's been a time where it's been the older people, older ministers, older gurus, people who have been established in various industries, and um, a lot of young people and new voices uh, think, oh, how am I going to ask? So now these established voices, they have their race, you have yours. But this is a time when new voices are coming um, into focus. And it's such a joy to see pe new people doing their thing, doing their thing and blessing us and bringing freshness and bringing new life. And so even you, whether you're an oldie or a youngie, you know, person, reinvent yourself, renew yourself, pick yourself up again and run the race that is ahead of you. For we will all attain that which is set before us. We will all attain the prize that is before us. And may he say well done to each and every one of us, good and faithful servant. No one is an excuse for us to not do what God has called us to do. Find your purpose, find your destiny, run with it. Know what you are to be doing part-time. Know what you're to be doing now, this year, next year. Um, um, in the scheme of the greater things 
that you're meant to do. You can't do everything one day. If you're 25 today, pace yourself. When Jesus tarries, you will still live to be, you know, um, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, if Jesus tarries. Friends, thank you for listening. I pray in Jesus' name, Father, that anyone going through great pain, hardship, unnecessary struggle, unnecessary emotional pain and baggage, that not through the power of your spirit, that weight is removed. That weight is removed. Your power shatters through every pain, every weight, every unnecessary um, um, past and weight and heaviness right now in the name of Jesus. Receive beauty for ashes. Receive flowers. Receive flowers of, of, of sweet smelling roses instead of um, the ugly savour that you have wallowed in. Receive a freshness from the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Receive fresh vision. Receive ideas. Receive creativity. Receive growth in your ministry. Receive increase. Move to the next level in the name of Jesus. Like a magnet, attract those who you are sent to and those who you are called to. Find your voice in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. If you're sick in your body, receive healing right now. Receive healing right now. Receive healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive healing right now. Conceive where you could not conceive. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.